I'm Shanae and this is my crazy family. After being separated from our family for over two years, we finally made it back to London for Christmas. But it is the second week of 2022 and guess what? We're still here. We intended on heading home before New Year's Eve, but COVID had other plans. We spent this week nursing our family back to good health and trying not to lose our minds in isolation whilst trying to figure out how the hell we were finally gonna get home. It has been an incredibly stressful week trying to rebook flights and find new accommodation for our family, but hey, if we have to be stuck anywhere in the world, we are grateful to be stuck here and stuck together. If you're new here, welcome. We hope you will stick around and subscribe. Liking this video and clicking that subscribe button takes just a couple seconds for you to do, but has a huge impact on us because it allows other folks just like you to find us here on YouTube so we can continue creating content for you in 2022. So before we get into the video, give us a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. And I just wanna say we so appreciate you for being here. So I hope you enjoy this week. Week's Life's a Beach vlog. Welcome to quarantine day 155. It's not quarantine day 155, but it feels like it being in this very tiny flat with none of our belongings, plus a toddler with a lot of energy, a baby who's pretty restless, and a husband who's the most bored of all of us has been I difficult. Saw Santa and she eats a cookie in the milk and she brings my breast. Yes, and that's what happened last week. We are not just lazing around in isolation. We're actually feeling pretty good. So, Bo, is it time to work out? Oh, yeah, baby. Not exactly your ideal gym situation, but I found a nice little spot on the rug here. I've been using this app, a uh, personal trainer on this app called Copilot since I was about six or seven weeks postpartum and she's been so accommodating in helping me do no equipment workouts while I've been away. So don't need anything for this one, just my body and my body weight. Um, and that's hard enough, honestly. Time to do it. High five! You meditating? <laughs> Just finished. Good job. Thanks for motivating me as always, guys. I just want to show you. 27 minutes, that was including a warm up and a cool down stretch. Really, workout time, I was probably working out for about 22 minutes. And look at me. No equipment, no cardio, but I am sweating my ass off and feeling strong. And I just want that to be hopefully a little motivator for you. Like, no excuses, you can get it done if you want to feel strong, if you want to feel like you're moving your body. I find it to be so, so beneficial for my mental health, which is why I've kept doing it even while we're in isolation. Time to definitely shower, because that's another thing that um, I'm trying to keep up while in this isolation period <laughs> to feel like a normal human being. Hey, couch potato, high five. Thanks for your moral support and your meditation was nice accompaniment to my workout. Do you feel strong? Yeah. Hot foot five? Foot five. <sighs> How you like in isolation? Is mommy stinky? Do you like my sweaty stink? Isolation ain't so bad when you got little babies like this to keep you company, hey? Hey, hey? Yeah. Happy boy. Clothes are on. I'm gonna do a little bit of skincare because I think just from being sick, I've broken out a little bit, so I need to treat all of that. But first things first, I'm gonna thread these brown, man. It's been a minute. And I know some people have commented below 
before in past videos saying like, oh, you thread your own eyebrows? Yes, I do. This is gonna be like the quickest tutorial ever, um, but you can just YouTube how to do it properly. Basically, you need thread, just any old cotton sewing thread, about 15 inches, knot it at the end. So you create a big loop, open it up, put it between your fingers, twist it like, I don't know, 10 times, 15 times, something like that. And then you've got these two sides. So basically you want one hand with your fingers closed inside of the loop and one hand with it open. And then by swapping that, opening up this side and closing this side, you pull the hairs out. One hand closed, one hand open, and then boom, that's it. Oh, I'm getting my actual hair. Oh, food's here. To be continued. We've been doing our best to stay healthy, get better quick, but we needed some burgers and fries and fish and chips and battered sausage and all that good stuff. Yum! And we're back. Okay, I'm totally done. Everything is really clean. Clean finish, cleaner than when you're just tweezing. And there's a little redness that will go down, but I haven't like stripped a layer of my skin off with waxing, so yeah. Hope that was helpful. Now that I have a blank hairless <laughs> canvas, I'm gonna do a little bit of skincare. Um, I'm doing it on my bed, which I normally wouldn't do, but there's no daylight in the bathroom. So this is gonna be better to show you guys what I'm doing. Thank you to Dime Beauty for sponsoring this video and for making some of my favorite products. Starting off with my Dime Beauty Whipped Exfoliation Mask. This stuff is amazing. I'm almost out of it, so I need more. My skin's a little bit damp. I just doused it in the bathroom. And then it's got these little beads in it that are really soft, so they're not abrasive for your skin. You're not gonna break any capillaries or do any damage, but you will start to get off that dead skin cell, so it physically exfoliates, and then it also exfoliates with the ingredients in it. It has salicylic acid, so it's gonna help with all of these little breakouts I've been having. After you exfoliate physically for about a minute, you just leave it to do its thing for like five to 10. Okay, I just rinsed that off and my skin feels so fresh, so smooth. And now it's time to treat things like my dark circles and my little breakout. I use their Luminosity Eye Serum literally every single day. It has cucumber and peptide in it. So it does the same thing that, you know, those cucumber circles on your eyes do that you always see in the movies. Um, just depuffs everything, brightens it up and it feels really, really soothing as well. I'm gonna finish with my holy, holy grail product, their blue facial oil. You can use it as a treatment and then moisturize. You can mix it in with moisturizer. I personally just use this as my moisturizer most days. It is literally blue, so it hydrates your skin while also treating redness, inflammation, and breakouts. It's like a drink of water for your skin. Look how hydrated my skin looks immediately. I've had really bad hormonal breakouts in this postpartum season that I'm in, and this little trio right here has saved my skin. I mean, I've gone from being terribly broken out all along my jawline to having completely clear skin in just a matter of days, all because of these products. So I really can't recommend them enough. Last step, and probably my favorite step, my eyelash boost serum. I use it twice a day because why not? And I do actually put it on in the morning before makeup. There's no reason not to. I've been using it really religiously for about six months and I normally have not been wearing makeup in isolation, obviously, because why would I bother? But I'm going to put on mascara right now just to show you how incredible the transformation is in my lashes. Got kicked out of the bedroom because Kingsley needed a nap. Put another little coat of Dimes Volume Mascara on. And you can see how insane my lashes have gotten. And it's all because of their growth serum. So you can buy each of these eyelash products individually, or you can buy them as a little duo set, a little bundle, and you'll get a discounted rate. 
And if you use my code BEACH20YT, you'll get 20% off site-wide. I have linked all of the products in one link in my video description below, so all of my favorite products are linked there. But again, the discount applies site-wide, so take advantage while you can. And thanks for giving me an excuse to put mascara on today because I feel a little bit more like myself than I have in these other days in isolation. What's going on here, Dad? <laughs> this is when this other this is school and I am AC. This is me. AC and Mimi. Yeah. Hi, this Mimi. Is, uh, Mimi is the type A personality <laughs> who gets really Hi. anxious whenever uh, AC comes over uh, that she's going to mess up my Hi, color Mimi. by numbers. Hi, Mimi. Hi, AC. Hi. So. Can we be friends? Yeah, of course. I'd love to be friends. It's New Year's Eve. Eve. We are in isolation still. So this is our New Year's Eve. We've got Colour by Numbers. Old School Glastonbury. A dead donkey that's actually a llama. And in a minute, a pie face game. It's game time in the beach Airbnb. But before we can begin, I must fashion myself a hat. Cause I just blow dried my hair all night, so I'm not trying to mess it up, you know what I mean? I'm gonna have like a nice ponytail and everything. <laughs> I like my Luke. Ringing in the new year in style. Three. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh! Whoa. One, two. Oh! oh, oh dead. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we ended up having a magical <laughs> New Year's Eve moment. Most of it was spent of me and Josh on the couch watching our favorite show, EastEnders. Um, and then Kingsley woke up to feed at 11.57 on the dot and I went in there and you could just hear the fireworks. I think I filmed some of it. So we'll chuck that right now. There you go. Happy New Year! Heard the fireworks going off. Josh ran outside, ran back inside. He's like, you have to come. So I just ran outside of my socks and robes holding holding Kingsley, which ended up waking up Bo. So we put a park on her and brought her outside too. And just all had this family moment exactly at the stroke of midnight ringing in 2022. And it was totally perfect. Was it totally perfect? The pub across the street, everyone was dancing. Yeah. Obviously we couldn't mix with anybody at all last night no, but to just step music, outside was nice dance yeah. in the alleyway. so back to reality we're going to take a couple of te uh, home tests this morning i'm technically allowed out of isolation i think tonight which was for on my nhs email given my original symptoms but we're just going to play it safe um if we're still testing positive still isolate so here is a nice little video montage of us shoving cotton buds up our nose. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah. No denying that. It's a positive test. And I feel perfectly fine, which is even more frustrating. Lucky bastard. I think if it goes, if it does develop at the last minute, then at least it looks like it's less positive now than it was. I don't know, it could change. I, don't, I really don't know, I'm not jinxing anything. So, as it stands, no, I'm still no. wearing no trousers because um, we're still locked I inside and why, why I put trousers on. And to my test, eventually a tiny, tiny, the most faint little line if you used your like really strong reading glasses started to appear. My original date to get out of isolation 
was tonight, but obviously I'm gonna continue isolating with my fam. We've moved off like by another two days, hoping that Bowie and Shen in two days are where I'm at with my tests. Two days before that, we will test again. If um, we're all kind of negative, great. If there's some faint lineage, then we probably still are great. And if people are still got solid lines, um, then we'll have to probably move the flight again by another couple of days. It's difficult to not get frustrated at it, but in the same breath, we feel really grateful that so far, all of us are all right with pretty mild symptoms. All right, see you later, mate. I was just sitting in my room by myself, feeling a little sorry for myself because I'm frustrated that I feel fine, but I'm still stuck inside and can't go home. But I hear baby giggles, which is cheering me up. Fight training. Hello. <laughs> there she goes, look. Baby fight club happening. Baby here. fight club. Oh. <laughs> No, you are not having deja vu. <laughs> We're just still in isolation. Josh is actually completely cleared. He got a negative test this morning, so he is good to go. Um, but I'm still testing positive and in isolation for and, one more day. And, and my dog is scared. The new dog is scared? Yeah. Is he scared of isolation? Yeah. I'm a little scared of another day in isolation too. I'm starting to go stir crazy. Um, but we're gonna get our little workout on. And you're gonna work out with me today, right? And I think Daddy is gonna do it with me too. So hey, it's another day. It's pretty much Groundhog Day over here, but we're trying to switch it up as best we can. Good morning. Guess who tested negative today? Me! Ready? Well, I was going through the bin trying to find a test to show you guys. So I thought, oh, he must be well excited. But look. Google Boy yes, isn't it? Okay, enough procrastinating. I'm not procrastinating. Oh, yeah! Oh my god. Once again. No equipment workout. In the middle of a living room while watching Peppa Pig. And I'm dying. Whew. It's working. Another little quick update here. So I tested this morning, so did Bowie. Josh is totally negative again, he's beat it. Um, we are still testing positive, but our lines were much fainter than they have been, and that's how Josh's was when he was on his way to testing negative. So that's a good sign. So we have a flight scheduled in three days, and to enter the US, you need a negative test within a 24 hour period of your departure time. So basically, if we decide to go ahead with the flight that we have booked, we need to cross our fingers and toes that we will both, Bowie and I, test completely negative in two days. But we lose this Airbnb on the same day we would be testing. So we would be moving to a hotel airport and taking off the next day if we were testing negative. But I don't have 100% confidence and that is going to be a lot of things having to line up in order for us to get on that plane and go home. And I just think with four huge suitcases, a stroller, a car seat, two kids, it's gonna be really stressful if it doesn't work out exactly perfectly. I think ultimately we're losing this Airbnb in two days. We can get the next direct flight four days later. I feel in my gut, it's just gonna be a whole lot less stressful to accept that, embrace that we're not gonna leave for about another week, find a new Airbnb to stay in for four days. We'll all be negative, we'll all be out of isolation at that point, which we are today, by the way. We're out of isolation, we're just still testing faintly positive. Um, 
then, you know, we can enjoy that last four days. We can actually go out, be in the city. We can see family and friends again and just make the best of the situation until we go home. Our dog, Frankie, is at home in really good hands. She's happy where she is. So we're so thankful for that. Otherwise, that would add a whole nother level of stress. But um, that's where we're at. Side note, if you are planning on traveling, this is a huge lesson learned. Your trip could be extended for up to two weeks, most likely. So just know that, plan for that, logistically, financially, all the rest of it, because obviously it is a huge additional financial burden that we were not expecting. Learning curve, learn through our mistake or our experience um, so that you, know, you kind of know what you're in for if things go sideways. Just to give us enough time really to, to test negative because you can fly on fit to fly letters you used to be able to get a fit to fly letter from the doctor if you haven't got any symptoms left and you've done your isolation period that doesn't exist anymore the british airways didn't know that that doesn't exist so i'm having to prove to them that we've even had covid in the first place to waive our fees and then go from there so um, i've got a call with them again in about another two hours and we'll know then Obviously, every extra day that we're here is costing us an extra day of accommodation, an extra day of car, and all the rest of it. And at this point, we knew we these just, risks. As yeah, well, but we didn't realize that no one's got an answer. That's what's annoying. That's the frustrating part. So at this point, we're literally playing it hour by hour, not even day by day, because we are still currently scheduled to take off in two days, but feel pretty confident. But we won't be testing negative by I that think time. Test negative. Exactly. Well, like that's just obviously cutting it so freaking close. So I'm hoping we can just push the flight by a couple of days so that we really feel more confident that we will be in the clear by the time we head to the airport. Um, and hoping for the best. So yeah, our fingers are crossed. Right now we're just heading to the doctor because Kings has had an ongoing cough. So we just want to get him checked out before he's on a plane for hours and hours and make sure he's all good. Daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh. <laughs> Little kids and old ladies are just the same, aren't they? <laughs> we're just waiting for the doctor to come look at our boy. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. I just want to see if there's anything we can give him, really. Because he just seems a little uncomfortable, don't he? Just dropped off Kingsley's prescription at the pharmacy. So we're going to grab some food while we wait for that to be ready. I can never remember which way to look before I cross the street. This is Westrum. It's not that far from Biggin Hill, which is where my mum currently lives. 
and this is where Winston Churchill lived. How Pretty cool. You? If you don't know who he is, he's a legend and won the Second World War. We got the Churchill message. <laughs> It's really helpful to have a sister-in-law who's a man with a van. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the suitcases. We're actually just relocating because we have officially been kicked out of our Airbnb. Not for partying too wildly on New Year's Eve, just because they have other guests and it is what it is. Goodbye, London Flat! You served us well! It's no. like we were never here, Keys! <laughs> Say goodbye to the flat! Spent way more time here flat than I thought we were going to, thank you very much. I slept here alone, I slept here with my family, I slept here with COVID without COVID, with Christmas without Christmas, <laughs> with coffee in my body without coffee in my body. It's been an emotional experience. I've been in this house more than I've been in my own house. <laughs> See you later. On to the next one. <laughs> has been a long day of just driving around killing time between checkout and check-in of our new place but we're in thought this would be a good opportunity to give you a little tour before we fill up this place with a bunch of our crap and it looks super messy because it's so cute Bo can I come in please yeah. a really cute little lounge area with a little sofa bed which is nice for if our cousin wants to stay straight into the dining. And then over here we have a desk, kitchen, all the essentials that one would need. A little back garden area, which is really nice. Hello. And then the bathroom seems to be kind of newly renovated. A shower and a bath which is an improvement from the last place because the bath situation was just in a shower and it was very makeshift and uncomfortable for the kids. Steepest, narrowest staircase of all time, which I'm a little terrified about going down while holding Kingsley. Bowie's bedroom, cute wallpaper, old school fireplace, and then mommy and daddy in Kingsley's bedroom, and that's it. It's a little bit tight upstairs, and the staircase is incredibly narrow, but I see Jim and Bella! But um, it's bigger than our last place, and it's gonna suit us down to the ground for these last final days, and now we have guests, and the place is gonna fill up! Hello! Welcome to London Home 2.0, yay! Morning, all the moving around and all the emotions we're feeling at the moment we completely forgot to let you know that it ain't got covid no more which is why we've been able to see some family again we're all a little bit paranoid and we're getting so close to having to take like our official tests to get on the plane so we're just going to take another couple of at home tests and then i think that's it bubba i think we're basically ready to go home aren't we basically <sighs> mad in it mad. We had a bit of a rough night. It's a really old place that we're staying in, so the heating works fine on the first level, but it's freezing cold the second you walk upstairs. Kingsley just could not stay asleep at all. We brought his play yard downstairs and we put out the pull-out couch. Just um, a sleepless night. I think I'm just feeling pretty defeated this morning, so I decided to press the record button because I don't do this very often. You know, we really try to be a light on this platform, and I always want to make sure that I'm showing up in a truthful way. Sometimes that just means that it's not all sunshines and rainbows. <laughs> it's been a really stressful couple of days. We stopped filming the other day when we were on the phone with British Airways trying to sort out our flight home because it ended up being about 11 hours on and off the phone with them. It ended up costing us so much money to change this flight because they changed their COVID policy. We were left until the very last minute 
to even know if we were going to be able to change the flight. So we didn't know what our accommodation needs were until about 9 p.m. the night before we had to be checking out of our current place, which is stressful for anybody, but with two small kids, you can't just show up at a hotel with four suitcases, a travel crib, a stroller, a car seat, and two kids. <laughs> like you can, of course you can, but for four days, in a small hotel room, that would have been really, really, really challenging and ultimately not very fair on the kids. So we always like to make sure we are staying somewhere with enough space for all of us, for all of the things that we need to bring with us and have a kitchenette as well so that we can feed our babies. I think where I'm going with this is that it's just been a really, really overwhelmingly stressful couple of days. And we've been trying to tackle this whole experience with as much positivity as we can because you have to accept the things that you can't change. And this is one of those scenarios that we simply could not change. We had to roll with it. So we were just staying grateful for our health and to be together, but that doesn't make it not stressful. And these last couple of days have just really like taken it out of me. You know, we haven't had a good night's sleep in a very long time. So I think sleep deprivation is just hitting me. I'm starting to get anxious about going back home to Tennessee with no support from family again. You know, the reality is to move countries is a really huge daunting undertaking. You're starting from scratch and have to build a new life for yourself from the ground up, which is something that we've definitely thought about with everything that's happened over the last couple of years. But I just don't think we're in a position where we can take that plunge as of yet. We have loved our time here so much and it's been such an amazing reprieve to have the support of family it's been such a joy to watch Bowie just fall so in love with all of her family members and watch her be so loved on because she deserves that it's been a stressful couple of days and now I'm starting to feel the weight of just the sadness of having to say goodbye not knowing when we're gonna have extended periods of time like this with our family again what that means for us is finding that new capacity to juggle our new family dynamic it's overwhelming. I know we'll figure it out. We always do. And my battery just died. The spare battery is in the diaper bag, which is now with Josh and the kids who left to give me a bit of a break. Just one of those mornings, you guys, oh my God. I think as a mom especially, and with all of the kind of chaos that's been going on over the last couple of weeks, like you're in survival mode the whole time. You're pushing everything forward. You're just trying to take care of the babies, take care of the situation. and. You can't let yourself break down in order to like keep going. And now that Josh has lovingly taken the kids out of the picture for just an hour or two so that I can have a moment to myself, I think it's just all hitting me like a ton of bricks and I'm just feeling like, like I need to maybe let myself feel however I'm feeling in this moment so that I can like get it out of my system. Anyway. I just wanted to hit the record button. Maybe you are out there watching this having had a less than ideal start to your 2022. And I just want to remind you that just because it's a new calendar year does not mean that you need to have this fucking pressure on your shoulders that like everything's supposed to be perfect all of a sudden because that's not life. Life happens, let it. Right now, I'm just letting myself feel. And if I wanna feel sad, or I wanna feel overwhelmed, or I wanna feel like lying around and doing jack shit for a minute, <laughs> I'm gonna let myself do that. Every day is a new day, a new opportunity to seize it and make the most out of it. And that's what I'm gonna do as of right now. Thank you so much for giving me this platform as an outlet, for always making me feel safe and just showing up exactly as I am because the internet is a scary place and that's not always the case and I just feel so, so spoiled that I have this incredible audience that tunes into our content week after week who just allows us the freedom and the space to come as we are. And I hope that by sharing this kind of stuff, it's giving you a little bit of permission and support in just showing up as you are because I'm so grateful for you. I am just sending you all of the love, all of the hugs, all of the cuddles and, and the good vibes and all of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you and we will see you next Sunday. Hopefully, we're actually making it home by then. We'll see.